in its start. The examples that you're giving should categorically acknowledge your achievements that can be buttressed through the use of facts, figures, or statistics. Interesting. Right. It's hmm. really important. Hmm. You need to also have a clear result. I developed, I delivered, I managed, I produced, right? Hmm. Based on your own skill, a very definitive leadership or influencing skill, right? It must also, to some extent, you know, epitomizes how you have leveraged, you know, courage, determination, or some of these very um, definitive leadership skill, vision, uh, planning, uh, people's management, and all of that, right? So I tell people many a times that when you are able to present your responses and an indicate all of those things, you have given a very, very succinct and concise response. All right, hello everyone. Welcome to today's talk with Prince Gideon Olariwaju, where today we're going to be having the Chevening application surgery. And so I wanted to just briefly introduce our guest for today. Um, his name is Prince Gideon Olariwaju. He's a multi award winning professional, a Nigerian social entrepreneur, and educational development practitioner who created the Aid for Rural Education Access Initiative, Area I, a nonprofit that creates multiple quality informal and alternative learning systems in rural communities and has facilitated access to education for over 6,000 disadvantaged children in Nigeria. He is a Chevney Scholarship Award winner and we're so happy to have you, Prince. So please go ahead and just introduce yourself so that we get into the application proper. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Fidelis. I think um, by and large, whatever you, you, you're reading is outdated, to be honest. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's fine anyways. It, it's such a great honor and privilege to be here. Uh, so I'm the Chief Executive Director of Area High. And um, over the last couple of years, I've championed the design and implementation of um, formal and alternative learning uh, interventions to ensure access to you know quality learning and empowerment uh, and employability for disadvantaged children in um, Nigeria uh, okay. during the COVID-19 pandemic I also started something called uh, the Digital Technologies for Learning Foundation Digilent uh, we built Nigeria's first SMS and USSD based learning platform that wow. enabled access to over 50,000 students in Nigeria to access you know um, uh, educational content, which are wow. instantly delivered to their mobile phone, wow. uh, basic feature phone that doesn't require internet. So wow. pretty much everything I do is about education. Um, and, um, you know, it's such an honor to be here. Thank you. I won the Trevor Scholarship in 2017, uh, studied for a Master's of Arts degree in International Education and Development Impressive. at University of Sussex. And I think if there's anything I've, you know, uh, perfectly done over time is to create some sort of um, a clearinghouse right a clearinghouse to ensure i could also mentor the next generation of uh potential applicants who had gone on to become scholars and now replicating themselves also by you know coaching people on how to write successful you know essay applications and scaling through the interview stage Excellent. as far as the chairman scholarship is concerned so really pleased to be here fidelis thank you very much so let's just dive into it i feel like you're doing a whole lot for the world and the world needs you right now but we need you now to help people to be the next generation of scholars right who will also Absolutely. transform their continents and their world in the most productive way so briefly yeah. just tell us a bit about um the scholarship and what the chevron scholarship basically is about in in brief okay so the chevron scholarship as pronounced Chevney, as the chi in cheese, right? Oh, wow. Is a scholarship program <laughs> funded by the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, FCDO, formerly called the FCO, Foreign Commonwealth Office, right? It started uh, years back. And I think right now it has about more than 50,000 uh, alumni across the world, including, you know, a uh, global icon in development, as well as current and past presidents, uh, it is um, targeted at developing, you know, or equipping or providing the opportunity for future leaders, policy influencers, um, opinion formers, word shakers wow. uh, to to develop the academic competence that they need uh, by studying for one year in a UK based university. Excellent. But beyond that, they also have the conceptual idea that by studying in the UK, these individuals will create long-lasting relationship with their co 
whole you know uh, of their colleagues in right. other uh, from other country who are also studying in the United Kingdom. Excellent. And I think that in itself, uh, you know, underlines the importance or the significance of the Chevening Scholarship. Right. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. It, it gives you opportunity. It pays. It, one of the good things about Chevening is that it's a fully sponsored scholarship right. in the sense that your tuition fee is covered. Right. You you get your your allowances. You are being funded, you know, they book your flight, your right. visa, they paid for your tuberculosis test, they give you settling allowance, they give you a lot of allowances when you get into the UK, and even when you're leaving the UK, right? Wow. Uh, which is really, really great. Um, and, you know... Yeah, let's go. Okay, good. So, um, the the scholarship is an all-encompassing one, and because of its uh, vast focus on professional yeah. development, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people... You know do turn up for it one of the okay. things that i love about chevlin as well yeah. is the fact that it doesn't have uh, a firm bias okay. for academic excellence in the sense that it is not a typical scholarship right. looking forward for you to have a first class or right. even to have graduated with a second class offer it is wow. interesting to note and state that uh you know past scholars that yeah. i know in yeah. my courts and subsequent courts are individuals who have gone to you know universities in Nigeria and has dieted with a second class lower. Interestingly, okay. recently we had a story of someone who had an HND. An HND is a Nigerian similar to a diploma, which is not mm -hmm. a proper, you know, university degree. And right. it's interesting because the person actually got a champion scholarship. And because wow. of you know that barrier or that limitation being removed, it's 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 a great one. To cap it all, yeah. it's focus on your developmental um aspirations, aspirations right? your, yeah exactly your contribution to you know humanitarian development and societal contributions right. is one of the major things about it mm. i would not shy away to note that chevney also has his own funding buyers mm. as someone who has engaged with different fellowships conferences you know scholarships myself right. i understand something called the funding ideology mm. of a, a funding agency right mm. and that mm. is to say that they have things that they've they they have their objectives right right it is it is key to note that the chevron scholarship is as an its own underlying strategy right and that is to advance the foreign policy strategies of the united kingdom popularly right. referred to as soft power soft or power. bilateral relations right okay. and because of that each of the countries under the chevron agreement has something called priority areas right right so right. many a times you see them tinting towards some defined subjects right. right it might not be stated categorically but you know historically looking at people who had won the scholarship you know in my court you know previously and even subsequently you will see that there is a bias for some subjects right and if you see it you would think there's a bias for you know development oriented pursuits or courses right uh and that can be anything right right mechanical engineering education global health public policy MBA, many of those courses are being, you know, funded, but I would know that it is heavily dependent on the foreign policy strategies or priority areas of the UK in the host country. Excellent. Wow. That's a very powerful one. And that's insightful, you know, to, to think that, you know, sometimes you can study a course, right? And just tilt it towards development is very, very interesting. Anything really, whether it's yeah. um, what we call Yoruba technology or whether it's a Greek, whether it's economics, whether it is whatever mathematics itself right as far as yeah. it looks like what you're saying is as far as you're tilting it towards the development towards yeah. social impact somehow if you're able to craft a story and narrate your your background and talk about your impact in that regard you probably will yeah. be a very good candidate for this and that leads Absolutely. me to the questions and specifically this is because we want to make sure that people get the meat of the conversation and able yeah. to leverage it quickly so mm -hmm. i'll share my screen just to uh talk about the the different aspect of 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 this application so the first is and we're going right straight away to the key areas in the, yeah. in the application specifically so the yes, first please. question says here, here that Shevlin is looking for individuals who will be future leaders or influencers in their home countries explain how you meet this requirement using clear examples of your leadership and influencing skills to support your answer so that's the first question, I guess. How would you approach yeah. this? Absolutely. So over time, 
conventionally for any essay writing process, right? right. Two things are important. The first one is the structure and the mm. second thing is the content, right? right? It is the combination of these two that makes up the entire essay, right? And I tell people, for the Chevening application, when you think about the structure to start with, three things must be constant. Three things must be reflective in your responses. And I will state them. Vision, right. impact, and passion, right? Mm. You can inverse it to say passion, impact, and vision in that order. So whatever you put down, right, your content must be indicative of all of those three, right? That is a starting note. And I'm still... So this is universal across all of the four questions, right? Beautiful. Now, let's talk about the leadership and influencing question in particular. Structurally, I would subcategorize this question, the response to this question, into four different paragraphs, structurally, hmm. right? From the conventional essay uh, plan, right? you have your introduction, right? taking up the first paragraph. Yeah. You have the body of the email taking the two you know, paragraphs in the middle, and then you have the concluding part taking the last paragraph which is the fourth paragraph so mm. we have it now we have the body yep. we have the intro and the conclusion now let's talk about the content in itself overall i would always tell people that you need to give a background of why you do what you do right mm. and to do that it is really important that you understand that the leadership question is really talking about how you will draw or give instances from your leadership experiences that can be from different um, um, perspective or experiences, right? right? It could be it could be drawn from your engagement from political party, from university society, hmm. from NGOs hmm. to charity to community organization or community development work hmm. to your daily work, even in your professional you know work of place. Right. or even professional associations right? Right. right now to you know connect it with you know influencing skills it could be drawn interestingly from debating right mm. when it when you talk about influence it could be drawn from your engagement in politics it could be drawn from you know having a blog right having a wow. podcast right <laughs> interesting now, people have blogs and podcasts read by millions right mm. that is a huge influence right it could be from your writing you you may have a column in a newspaper where you share Taught leadership at the Supreme wow. Court. Exactly. Right. It could be from your work in lecturing or your work in education or even social media, right? These are places where you can bring or draw your experiences from. And these experiences must now be articulated in the form of two major, you know, responses. I tell okay. people, okay. this question requires you to give at least two definitive instances, right? that showcases your impact, your vision, your passion across, you know, all of these places that I've mentioned. And from the usual formula that we know when it comes to essay writing, we call it the STAR framework, right? Right. How best can you touch the full part of these examples to ensure that it indeed reflects your leadership potential, right? Because remember, the question is saying, we are looking for individuals who would be future leaders right. or influencers in their own country now give clear examples of how you meet this through your own leadership and influencing experiences right. so you want to give examples and i'm advising in this case two examples to which you will use the staff framework to respond to but right. i used to say that regardless of what you do you need to ensure that your response is outstanding so what right. do i mean by an outstanding response even when you are put into consideration all of the things that i've said Right. The first thing is that the examples that you're giving should categorically acknowledge your achievements that can be buttressed through the use of facts, figures, or statistics. Interesting. Right. It's hmm. really important. Hmm. You need to also have a clear result. I developed, I delivered, I managed, I produced, right? Hmm. Based on your own skill, a very definitive leadership or influencing skill, right? It must also, to some extent, you know, epitomizes how you have leveraged, you know, courage, determination, or some of these very um, definitive leadership skill, vision, uh, planning, uh, people's management, and all of that, right? So I tell people many a times that when you are able to present your responses and indicate all of those things, 
you have given a very, very succinct and concise response, right? Now, uh, I think one thing is that not only are you going to demonstrate your achievements, you need to also so, show potential, right? Now, that potential is where the part of the vision comes in and you can tint that towards your conclusion, right? I tell people, let the way I write essays and I've seen people write every essays, you need to ensure that your introductory line, which is referred to as the thesis statement and your concluding line is very punchy, right? If you are going to conclude, you need to bring back to the fore the importance of a Chevlin Award to advancing your leadership vision as you have, you know, engaged or explained in the essay body, right? Through the examples, because the, the idea is that you want to do more for all of the examples and achievements you've illustrated in your examples, right? So it is really important that when you're concluding, you need to reinforce the importance or significance of a Chevlin Award to that, right? Awesome. So that's So that's Sorry. our leadership. Yeah, that's okay. fine. Excellent. So um, we will go straight. And thank you very much for that response. We'll just go straight to the next one, which is about the networking, the networking okay. essay. Thank you very much for that. And I heard yeah. you talk about the store staff model. Do you want to just explain what that oh, is? Oh, yeah, sure. Apologies. I, I just yeah. made a very wrong assumption that people who know what star means. Exactly. All right. The star framework, which yeah. interestingly has been continually modified right. for individual use, for example, I do not call it star. I call it star L. And I'm going to talk about the L as well. Okay. The star, the H stands for situation. Yep. The T stands for task. Mm -hmm. A, action. R, result. The L that I had added is lessons. Right? Oh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I so like that. When, when, when expressing or trying to tell a story, right. in, devel in development, it is assumed that the best framework you can leverage to tell the full components or elements of a well-balanced story is right. when you use this framework. Excellent. So what is the situation? Yeah. In the typical Chevlin essay, if I'm going to apply it to myself now, I'm yeah. going to talk about the fact that there are 50 million Nigerian children. This is the situation. This is me trying to write a Chevlin essay in my head. Thank to you for the example. example. Thank the you. Start, <laughs> absolutely. With the staff framework. Right. The situation would be that 50 million children in Nigeria have attained the age of 10 and cannot read, write, or do basic arithmetic. This is referred to as the national literacy crisis. And I'm not mm. even talking about the fact that we have children in school uh, who are out of school. Those right. who are school-aged, who have completed primary education and mm. cannot or, or and lack the literacy and numeracy skills. That is the situation, right? right? And because of my you know, engagement, my day-to-day -day life engagement with some of these kids on the road. Now, some of the examples that I might I might give might be figurative or, you know, just, you know, just for me to create uh, a very good picture. Right. Now, the task would be that I become uh, passionate or became passionate about designing, you know, literacy and numeracy interventions that yeah. will respond to the situation of the high level of illiteracy and numeracy levels in the society. Right. 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 The action that I took, very definitive. Remember, passion comes first. And then I bring in vision and then people's management. I leverage on social media, right? That could be a way you can bring in your leadership or influencing skills mm -hmm. to make a call for, you know, people who are passionate about education. And I right. formed a small group of individuals and we started these um, extramural um, learning sections mm -hmm. across primary and secondary schools in Ijushaga and Mushi, Lagos, right? So every Saturday, we gather ourselves, I coordinate them, we mobilize ourselves. And between two years of doing this, we've been able to teach children right. as a form of after-school learning section on how to read and write. And we have about 51,000 students or children that okay, we have reached so far. Hmm. That is the result, right? Hmm. Um, situation tax. Tax yes. was, you know, they need to respond to it. Right. The action was what I just said. Right. The result, right, is what we've seen. Yeah. Now, the lesson is that it is important that you, there is no way you can be so perfect as a leader and there will not be rooms for improvement, improvement right? Improvement, yeah. And because of that, you want to highlight how you had done the tweet online for the first day 
and because you have 200 followers on twitter uh it didn't reach much until you decided to you know reach out to some major voices or actors who have a you know larger or bigger platforms right. and they were able to share it and then you were able you know to share and then you remember that it is important that you can also leverage on networks or mm -hmm. people be able to reach a larger audience that is the lesson for you right, right? that is the simple application you know of the star framework figuratively within thank the you. context of that leadership question thank right? you thank you for awesome. the generous answer just in the interest of time absolutely yeah, yeah we'll just go to the second question which is about the networking it says here that um Shevlin is looking for individuals with strong professional relationship building skills who okay. will engage with the Shevlin community and influence and lead others in other chosen field or profession. So please explain how you built and maintained a, maintained relationships in a professional capacity using examples of how you currently do this and outline how you hope to use these skills in the future. Of course, minimum of 100 words and maximum of 500 words. Yeah, so one of the things I would start with would be never write 100, 200, 300, 400. They gave you 500 words limit for a reason, right? <laughs> and it, historically, they, the highest or the smallest I've learned in recent time of the total Chevening applicants per year runs into 60,000. Last wow. year, I think it was 82,000 globally. So wh where, where you have people who even need more word count beyond 500, don't go out be writing 200 or 400. Okay, now to the question. I think one of the things that is important to note from this question is strong professional relationship building skills and how you're going to engage with the community. I think it is important that people keep in mind that in professional or personal development, building and maintaining relationship is really key. And you can use the instances of how you've done this, right? How you've connected and engaged with people within organizations, communities, businesses, professional associations, or any professional connection that you can, that you know. Right. Chefni, through this question, want to understand how you connect with people, maintain relationship and leverage those relationships for a mutual benefit towards the advancement of social impact or social development. So you want to talk about how you had met someone at a conference, for example, and you had kept in touch with a person. Look at myself and yourself now, Fidelis, right? We've known since... Who knows when, like <laughs> maybe 2012 or 2013, I've forgotten now. But look at us. This video, I don't know how far it's going to go, but we know it's going to go far. This is a very good example of how you're connected with someone. You have kept up with them through social media. You have created the platform, Chevin SA uh, Gallery or Weaponry, as we've called it, right? And then people are going to leverage on that. That's a very good example, right? You want to give, similarly, you want to divide your essay into first you know four paragraphs right you introduce i tell people one of the best ways to actually introduce this networking question is to actually talk about your own interpretation of the concept of networking and how you have applied that in your own professional life if you ask me i would say networking i am not saying people should introduce by de by defining right but you can give a contextual introduction to what networking means to you and for me i think it's about you know, establishing mutually beneficial relationship towards mutually beneficial outcomes, right? That would be mine. And what I would use to explain that would be when I connect with people, it is because they are also willing to connect with me. And that's what I mean by mutually benefit, you know, beneficial, right? Relationships. And then mutually beneficial outcomes, because at the end of the day, if we are going to work together, it will not be a parasitic kind of relationship. It will be commensal. Sorry, I'm referring to biology, meaning that, <laughs> meaning that, you know, they, they are able to take something out from that association with me. And I can also take something out from that association with them. It is important because Chevy believes that when you have an odd bed of seasoned professionals with multiple cultural, religious, academic, professional backgrounds coming together to form a Chevy court in a year, it serves a whole lot of advantage to balancing with academic competencies because that means you can learn about the contextual reality of, of education in philippines in guatemala in mexico and leveraging those understanding to you know practical and policy introductions or implications in nigeria 
right? And they want to really, you know, want you to show and, you know, demonstrate that you have done this successfully in the past. So, if I were you, I would say ensure that you provide either one or two clearly articulated examples from the network that you have built through very strong professional relationship building skills in a professional voluntary or community context now i will give an interpretation to that three professional right it could be in your workplace right and trust me there are a lot of people who have been engaged with impact making endeavors at their place of work right it could be from a voluntary you know um perspective there are so many social impact voluntary organizations that exist out there. You have the JCI, you have the Enactors, you have the Global Shapers Community. And these are places where you meet people and people connect and they go on to build amazing, you know, enterprises or institutions that, you know, touch life. Or it could be in the community contest. For many of us that work in society development and work with non-profit community-based organizations, you need to leverage stakeholders' engagement, right? You get into a community and you have the gatekeepers, right? And when I mean gatekeepers, I don't mean gatekeepers literally. I mean, you know, traditional rulers, uh, community head, religious health, who you need to, youth leader, uh, um, leaders of youth associations that you need to form relationship with. You can use an example of how you are able to make them see reason with your course and how they came on board and how you are able to deliver, you know, results based on that association. So, if you're going to give your response to this kind of question, you must show how you have used your skills to network to achieve a positive outcome. That means the angle of, you know, statistics or figures or results that are actually demonstrable is also, you know, evident in your response. You want to talk about how you have been able to also build your professional network and how, you know, you have acted on opportunities presented to you by some of these professional networks that you belong to. It is important that you are able to name some of those professional networks because that would enable you to show what the Chevin network will mean for you. You can also show how you have been able to, you know, introduce other people to that network and how, you know, you would now come back to Nigeria and leverage on that skill to improve the Chevin community. It is really important because I tell people when you are closing out on your essay, while you have done it in your leadership that it is very punchy and you are bringing back Chevin to the fore, this is where you also need to bring Chevin back why saying you are going to use that networking skills in the united kingdom to connect with people and when you come back to nigeria not only are you going to use it to contribute to the chevney alumni association of your country but also to continually contribute to the advancement of the objective of chevney it is really important right so if you have one question uh one answer that can justify that goal if you don't you can use two concise clear well articulated answers um examples to be able to demonstrate that you get thank you very much sir that's that's very exhaustive and to the third question to the third question just about the study plan in the uk and yeah. um just again because again we have like a time limit with for, for this recording i know there's a whole lot we can actually have days yeah to i know right just get this all out but in the interest of time the third question says that here outline why you have selected your chosen three university courses and explain how this relates to your previous academic or professional experience and your plans for the future please awesome. do not duplicate the information you have entered on the work experience and education section of this form absolutely so that's, I think, that's a great clue <laughs> yeah this is a very straightforward question what the question wants you to do is demonstrate that you have an extensive understanding and knowledge of the courses as well as the university you selected mm -hmm. permit me to bring it to the fore that in the chevron application you are expected to identify three universities of choice as well as three courses in each of these three universities right right huh. so that means you have university of x a course university of b a course university of c a course right now it is important that you show reasons and i tell people what you need to do would be to show nine distinctive reasons huh. right it's a lot to cramp into 500 words but it's the best you can do right <laughs> nine distinctive reasons and i'll give you an example if you have selected university of success for example give three reasons and you can do that in one paragraph it could mm. be one statement each huh. right so your whole essay can be nine long statements wow. or sentences and they summarize all of the reasons why you've selected all of your three universities 
If you select a University of Liverpool and um, ideological management, you should be able to tell three reasons. Now, because of that, I will give you the typical responses that I expected. Number one, you want to talk about the reputation of the university. Excellent. If the university is ranked first in the UK for your subject matter, you can mention that. That's one. You want to talk about the reputation of some university faculty members. If there's a renowned professor mm -hmm. in your school, it could be a reason why you've selected that institution, right. right? Reputation of the university, reputation of the faculty. It could be the presence of an institute or mm. an agency. Um, mm. The one that is most popular when it comes to this would be the Institute of Development Studies at University of Sussex, which is ranked the first in the world four years in the row. So a lot of people used to refer to this because it is indeed a valid reason to select that you want to go to Sussex. Right. We could talk about the module. This is the most important as well. Huh. I would advise that you at least one constant reason across all of the three courses should be the applicability of a module, one wow. module to you know to your professional work. Right. right. So if one of the module is the fundamentals of education policy planning, ensure that you talk about what you will learn in that and what how it would inform your work. Right. right. I think by watching videos online, people can actually see more of, um, you know, the reasons. But I think I've given about four to five different bases or reasons to which you can, you know, talk about the course and um, the university choices you've made. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you very much. And this is to the last so the last part of um, the application, this one talks about, um, I think, yeah, the career plan. Your career car plan, yeah. Yeah. So the question for us here is very clear. It says, um, Shepna is looking for individuals who have a clear post-study career plan. Yeah. Please outline your immediate plans upon returning home and your longer-term career goals. Um, you may wish to consider how this relates to what the UK government is doing in your country. So I think that's the last question in, in this in this regard. Absolutely. And permit me, from my own perspective, I don't want people to quote me anywhere or yeah. somewhere. Mm -hmm. I think this is one of the most important questions of the all of the four is important, but to me, I would tell you this is really, really important and can make or break your application. <laughs> and why do I say that? Um, the last I checked. The estimation of a Chevron award in a Nigerian contest is 33 million naira. Wow. So if UK government is investing taxpayer money, as they will call it, right. for you to pursue a degree, they want to understand how that would translate to growth for you, right? It is really important that you are able to, you know, um, concisely talk about how you will translate the acquisition of a professional degree to the growth of Chevron of your country as well as the United Kingdom. So right. I tell people. This career plan is important and you can also tackle it from the structural perspective. Divide this essay either into four or five. And I'm going to give why. You want to talk about um, the, the, the introduction and the conclusion. And then in the body, which is three paragraphs, the most important is for you to talk about your immediate plan upon return to your own country. Excellent. Right? You want to talk about your five-year plan and then you want to talk about your 10-year plan. I said you know, four or five, because I also think people can decide to do it upon return, five years, 10 years, and long term. Right. Now, how do you present under each of these? Upon return, you must be able to articulate what exactly you will be doing and where, right? right? So you can say, upon return, I want to become the chief, uh, uh, the head of policy unit of the Nigerian Ministry of Education. Mm. In this capacity, <laughs> I will do this and this and this. Now, right. Chevy always wants that it must be ambitious but at the same time, realistic within your field, right? So if I'm working in education now, I want to talk about a progressional advancement along my career that will show how I have, you know, you know, how the Chevening scholarship would actually contribute to that, right? So you must talk about your clear short-term plan. And that is why you're talking about the, you know, immediately upon return and then three years. And then long-term, you're talking about five years, 10 years and long-term. You must also talk about how you will leverage your Chevening experiences. Right. You must, so, for example, if your five years plan is to become uh, the head of policy advocacy uh, for the UNICEF global education engagement stuff at New York, you must be able to talk about how the module course of, you know, policy uh, advocacy in the global south would have enabled you to acquire, you know, very definitive skills that you can apply to that job. And that is what they meant by you leveraging Chevron experiences. 
And you must also talk about how you are aware that you can also, you know, advance, you know, uh, UK interest in your home country. Who can potentially be getting engaged to some of UK funded projects back at home, right? That can actually be a very strategic one. Not really strategic because you want to convince your reading committee, but because indeed, one of the ways you can actually give back is contributing to the UK in your home country. So imagine you are contributing to a UK funded project as an active component of that framework in your home country. It's a win-win for you, for your country and from the UK. So for example, I can say I want to become the country manager for the FCDO funded digital access program in Nigeria. That's very, very great. Particularly if my work, if I've gone to study MSc in digital development at the University of Manchester, for example, that's a very clear example. And I can talk about how one of the modules will help me in that instance or the experiences in the UK over and out. Conclusively, it is important that at the concluding paragraph of all of the four essays, emphasize and reflect or re echo the importance of being awarded the achievement, you know, to all of the things you've said in the body of your email. Right? Oh my goodness, this is this is explosive. This is explosive. I think I think um I think I would probably recommend this to anybody really who is doing a lot of projects out there because you know my thought used to just be just go study, right? But now it looks like there is more to it. There are more opportunities, there are more benefits. You know, you can Absolutely. even and I know that you joined the network forever. I think it's a is a lifelong fellow. Yeah, it, it's it's a lifelong so they say scholar for a year, chevna for life, right? So <laughs> I like that. And my my profile in itself is a right. vivid indication of how you become a part of that uh, you know fellowship for life because i've had more of the benefits to my professional career has come at the end of the scholarship itself rather than during the the, the scholarship year so it's wow. a it's a win-win yeah Th thank you very much prince gideon so just this is like a bonus tip for folks right yeah um for those who would get to the interview stage right just yeah. basically do you mind just sharing some tips? Because I know that, yeah, these things are in stages and all of yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you might so just... I shall mention that. I yeah. shall mention that. So one of the things that happens is you apply for the S for the application or for the scholarship through an application process, write four essays, fill some other uh, forms online, then you submit, and then they get back to you after a long while. Trust me, it's a one-year adult waiting process. Wow. And then you get that you've you know, gone to the interview state. Now, this is what I tell anybody. I like to do some sort of a reverse psychology engagement when it comes to interviews, hmm. right? It is at this point that you want to turn up at the interview stage and say, this is me, don't select me for the scholarship. And why do I say that? <laughs> I tell you because if you get to the scholarship, to the interview stage, you're already selected for the Chevron scholarship. The interview stage is just a very formative process of weeding out those who by virtue of their lack of confidence, their lack of a foundational understanding of the traveling process, they are errant ignorer of the uh, uh, eligibility criteria of the scholarship itself, uh, have come, you know, and got into this stage, right? Mm. So I tell people, when you are at this interview stage, you are in, except you want to show up and want to, you know, go mess up the plan yourself, right? Mm. So it is important that one of the things you want to do is to know that the interview is a build-up right. of your essays, right? And what you're going to do is to go convince them that, hey, guys, I wrote this essay. I understand what I've written. And it is important you hand this scholarship to me in your own best interest, right? right. Now, it's important to, for you to know that it's also a very competitive process, right? right. So why 20 people who have got to interview stage in Nigeria are listening to this right now, for example, right? right. It takes, you know, an extra beat Mm. Uh, of information, of confidence uh, for people to be able to articulate their plans and be able to connect the dots of all of their essays. Now, one mm. of the things I tell people, let there be a thread that connects all of your four essays by the time you get to the interview stage. Impressive. The four essays do not exist in their own individuality, right? They are connected. It is one, one application plan, right? So ensure that there is uniformity across the ideas that you are presenting. Where, because at the interview stage too, they are asking you four basic questions. Four basic questions according to the four essay questions, right? right? 
And I tell people, don't turn up at the interview and saying totally different things from what is in your application, right? right? The only thing you can do would be if you have given one examples in your application, you want to go and give one more, but don't forget you the application you gave in your essay. Right. Now, I tell people that the interview stage is also an opportunity to add magnitude to the responses you've given, hmm. right? What do I mean by that? You had magnitude to things by using the the framework, I don't have a mnemonic for it, like star, right. Right. or you refer to places, people, date, and time, wow. right? Because that in itself helps you to add tangibility to your responses. It wow. is not, it wouldn't appear as if you're faking it, right? Or you're telling a lie, right? Now, it is also important, I think I'll come back to this before I forget, okay. do not lie. Hmm. <laughs> At this point, I will not hide away from the fact that I will share that whatever I've shared today comes from my experience as both someone who had sat in front of an interview panel hmm. and sat behind an interview panel, right? right? And trust me, most of the guys who will be sitting to interview candidates, they are not dollars, right? Right. It makes up individuals from the British High Commission, from hmm. the visa office, and a champion alumni who, who are also the, you know, the best of the best. Yeah. So if you say you work on something, these guys would have read about you days before you come for the interview. So if you have quoted something wrongly, you have adulterated, you know, the facts and figures of your impact as um, impact statement. It right. is vivid before them. And then you are already disqualified even before you get into the room. Wow. Right. And most importantly, again, do not cram. It is your story. Right. Own it. Right? right. And that is where adequate preparation comes in. Understand it and be confident about it. So let me go back to places, people, dates, and time, right? Okay. If if there are individuals you have, you know, mentioned in your essay, when you come to the interview stage, this is time for you to mention their name, full names, where they work, where you met them in the Korodu, Lagos on September 7th, 1997, wow. right? It shows that you are very, very clear, right, of what, you know, you're doing. Right. Now, at the point of the interview to see, go and read about anything the UK and Chevney and understand and know the process right. and know how the chairman scholarship or the uk interacts with different components of your essays right, right? i'll give you an example the example of the uh, of the literacy and numeracy i gave right if i'm someone who wants to study educational development you know and i have worked around literacy right. i would also want to understand that the uk fcdo funds something called the kamal accelerator which is the Kano Literacy and Numeracy Accelerator in Nigeria right now. It's one of the biggest literacy projects funded by the UK in Nigeria. Huh. I can and I, I can and should find a way to connect that kind of a project to my impact statement, right? right? This these are just you know basic ways, you know, that people can ensure that by the time it's time for the interviews, you know, uh, they they would be ready. Yeah. Now to conclusively state, I think it's important for me to state this. And that is because as someone who have mentored people, it is important for people to know this. Right. And this is what I would say. Yeah. By virtue of luck, chance, privilege, or circumstance. Right. Some people are strategically positioned to win the Chevron Scholarship than others. Mm. And because of that reality, if you are watching this video and by a vivid account of your professional journey, you think that are some eligibility criteria that is not adding up. I want to tell you there is 1,001 other worthy scholarship hmm. opportunities out there that right. will gracefully fund you to advance your, you know, academic studies. Right. Because, you know, I, I am not against people saying they apply three, four times, right? Right. right? But I think by the time you're waiting three, four times, it comes to a point that your age is going out of range, <laughs> right? Absolutely. Right. You know, yeah. that is the theory behind many of these opportunities. Once you have 22, 27, 30, 35, 35. <laughs> you can apply for some things again, which is right. a disadvantage to you, right? right? Instead of waiting, you can explore some, some other opportunity. Mm -hmm. But you know, some people will say, you, 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 you will not know if you don't try. Right. If you're fine with that, that is totally, you know, fine as well. Excellent. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. Again, this is the end of our 
talk and conversation, but I know you have some products, you have some books, you have some materials and courses that you yep. have developed, right? Yep. And to be very honest, you have so much to offer the world, but I know there are some highly classified and highly relevant information that you might probably want to put out there. So please feel free yeah. to give people your social media platform, Absolutely. your courses, your resources, yeah. how to reach you and just share it to the world so that people can reach you and even as it were, quote and unquote, you know, leverage your experience and Absolutely. you know even join your really inner circle. To that. Yeah. It's not a problem. So I I my profile is you know uniform across all social media platforms <laughs> and that is at Landry Shipper. I think maybe when when uh, Fidel is, is is uploading or editing this, yeah. you can just put it maybe somewhere at Larry sure. Shipper. So on Twitter, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, it's on there. And please, I want to put a caveat. I am not available to review essays at this point, please. <laughs> oh, but there is something that that is on YouTube right now. Okay. It is a video of a Chevening mock interview that I did. Yes, I and saw it. Watched YouTube video on Chevening in history, right? It's been watched by over 100,000 people. And I've been to conferences, travel, airports, and see people meet me and say, I saw this video of you, and it really helped my Chevney journey. So wow. if you lay your hands on this video as well as that video, you don't need anybody to review your essay because you have a perfect template of how to put together a very fantastic essay that will get you to the interview and take you from the interview to becoming a Chevney scholar uh, when you decide to apply. Thank you very much. Ah. Uh Prince Gideon, I, I I am clapping. I'm clapping in my heart. I'm doing like this. But Please, I'm clapping for you. Thank you so much for putting this together. A lot of people will not know what has gone into me and you having time to actually sit down to have this conversation. So thank you to Fidelis. I'm really honored to be here. All right. Thank uh, you well very done. much. Thank you very much. So um, this is a shout out to all the viewers. Thank you for sticking by. Um, feel free. Wish you the very best. If you need any other resource, just check on the link below. I'll share yeah. some resources for you to just to leverage on. And I wish everybody the best. So thank you very much and have a very great day. Bye everyone. <laughs>